This video is fully based on my personal experience and I wish this was online, such type of video when I was searching for my grand piano, so that's the reason why I made this video. Buying a grand piano is a lot of money and a big investment, so you definitely want to be sure that you have the best for your price. This video is for everybody who wants to buy a grand piano or is searching for one right now, and also for the people who think well, I can't afford a grand piano. Well, in case you are going to buy one in the future, this video is going to save you a lot of money, time and quality. First, there are two choices. Either you are going to buy it in a piano store or you are going to search private and buy a second-hand used piano. If you can afford to buy a new piano, of course, go buy a new piano. But I know from experience that most people can't afford to buy a new piano. You can also buy secondhand used pianos in piano stores. The positive side of buying in a piano store is that you have a warranty from approximately 2 till 5 years. The downside of buying in a piano store is that you obviously have to pay a lot more. My advice would be to go search private for a second-hand used piano. Of course you have to do a lot of research and also search on a lot of sites and also test a lot of pianos. But at the end of the day it will all be worth it because you will spare money and also quality. Of course everything has its upsides and also downsides. Aww. The upside of buying a private second-hand used piano is that you will spare a lot of money and quality because for that amount of money you can get an even better piano. The pianos at the piano store are also really good but I'm just saying that you can spare money and quality. There are probably a lot of people who bought a new grand piano but ending up not practicing at all or not even having time to practice or didn't even like piano playing anymore so they are going to sell their grand piano. The quality of the piano is then almost new so you have like basically a new grand piano if you're lucky enough of course to find one the downside is that you have to do your research well and also test more pianos however i just tested one piano privately and it was immediately the best i'm really happy with my piano it also depends on luck because when i was buying my own grand piano suddenly there were a lot of grand pianos like uh, Yamaha C3 and Yamaha C2X which suddenly all became available so I'm 100% sure that this was the best choice I could have made when I bought my grand piano. I'm just saying that suddenly there can be a lot of grand pianos available and sometimes for a month nothing. So yeah. Of course if you can afford a Steinway yeah, Steinway is the best choice. Of course, most people can't afford a Steinway, but 
Other brands which are really good are Yamaha and Koi. Yamaha and Koi are really the best choices for a grand piano which are affordable and also from very high quality. It's also the reason why you see in every music university and also conservatories a Steinway, a Yamaha or a Kawai. I'm not saying that the other brands are like bad or something, totally not. I'm just saying that with these choices you can almost never go wrong. Those are really from high quality and yeah. And of course Fazioli and Bösendorf are really good, they are great and awesome, just like Steinway. But I just mentioned Steinway because I prefer to play on a Steinway. And if you can afford that, that's in my opinion one of the best choices you can make, if you can afford it. Three, if you are going to buy a Yamaha or a Kawai, please search a grand piano which is after the build year 2000 or on 2000. That was the advice which my piano tuner gave to me. The reason why is because if the piano is built after 2000, the piano will more likely be in a really good state. Unless the piano was from a conservatory student which practiced a lot. But yeah, you have to do your research also for that. Another reason is also that the mechanics of the piano will probably be more conform to the pianos which are made today. Also in general, how younger the piano is, how better the piano is. Well, you might think now, how do I know in which year the piano is built? And how can I trust every owner of the piano? And how do I know if they speak the truth? Well, you can easily know with the serial number in the piano because there are probably a lot of sites. I definitely know one because I found my own serial number there. You can find the serial number there and then also, of course, the build year of the grand piano. The last tip of the buying process, which is probably one of the most important tips, is to go check with a piano tuner. Please go check with a piano tuner. I can really, I really can't emphasize this more. Ironically, I didn't go with a piano tuner, but wait. But what did he the say? piano tuner which I called actually sold this piano to that man in 2014. So he knew the piano was in perfect state, almost new. So that's the reason why I didn't go with a piano tuner. And in case you can also check for yourself the piano. So the things you need to take a look at are the soundboard, which is under the piano, the strings in the piano, the hammers in the piano where you can see if the piano is frequently played or not, and also the keys. But of course the keys you will test them when you play on them. Also please the golden tip, when you are going to buy a piano second hand, the price is never the price which it says on the side. You can always push down the price with hundreds, 200, 500, 1000, even 2000, even 4000 maybe even. Of course when a grand piano is 4000 you are not going to cut it with 3000. So if there is 1000 left, of course not. How higher the price is, how more price you can cut off. It will always be better to buy a higher quality grand piano even if it's more expensive because in the long term it will definitely pay off. I'm 100% sure of that. Well now that you have bought your grand piano there are still accessories which are a lifesaver to grand pianos. The first one is a carpet. The reason why is because it isolates the sound of the grand piano and you have a much better sound of the grand piano. The second accessory is a air humidifier when you have a very low humidity in your room or in the country where you live or a air dehumidifier if you have a very high humidity. The reason why this is important is because the piano will go much faster out of tune and also much frequently when there is a very high percent of humidity like 70 or something. Also a very low humidity like 30% is also not good of the piano. The reason why I don't know that exactly but I know it's not good for the wood. <laughs> not good for the wood. <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> a carpet costs around like $100 or more or less. It really depends on how big your piano is. An air humidifier costs around like two or three hundred dollars or it can also be less. It really depends on how big the air humidifier is 
and also how big the space is that they have to humidify. But excessive dryness is much more dangerous for the piano than the opposite. And at last, the things you must not do is to put your grand piano in the sun because that's not good for the piano because of the heat. Also, avoid to place your piano near any heatings. Also, try to avoid windows as possible. And of course, sudden temperature changes or excessive moisture or dryness, which I explained with the air humidifier. The reason why is because the wood needs to be protected from heat humidity or sudden temperature changes because it can shrink or maybe set out and also the strings and other metal ports can rust because of excessive moisture for example there are also a lot of other causes which i probably didn't mention but yeah i'm not an expert and in general very important proper conditions mean better sound and yeah who doesn't want better sound right so that was it for this video. I really hoped it helped a lot and I hope I could answer some of your questions or problems. If you have any questions left, please don't hesitate to ask me in my DMs on Instagram because I answer all my DMs on Instagram. You can also comment down below your comment and I will answer them. I really hope it helps and yeah, please like and subscribe this video if you want to see more YouTube content in the future. And yeah, bye-bye.